What's up everyone, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and in this video I will be reviewing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth for the PS5. Final Fantasy is one of the longest running franchises and a cornerstone of the gaming world dating back to its first release in Japan, and with 16 Final Fantasy mainline titles, it's hard to argue there being a more iconic installment of this franchise than Final Fantasy VII. From Final Fantasy VII's original release back in 1997, Square Enix announced in 2015 it was remaking this beloved title into three parts, with the first part, Final Fantasy Fantasy 7 Remake releasing in 2020 to pretty strong reviews. But now the year is 2024, and all eyes have turned to its next installment. With Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth here, the hype meter was turned to max levels. And thus, Marsman has sent me my next assignment, to investigate and report on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and answer some important questions. Did this game meet the hype? Is this game awesome? Does Cloud really have negative charisma? Guess so. In this review, I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. So join me as I share my experience fighting epic bosses, playing some card games, and gazing at the greatness of Tifa. Respectfully, you sickos. But before we continue with the review, if you like variety gaming content that includes reviews, opinion pieces, previews, and streams, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And also hit that bell for notifications. We appreciate your support. And now, back to the review. First, let's talk about the good. And without question, the star of the show for this game, to me, is the combat. The game uses a party system, where you control a main character and make a party of three or two companions amongst your group. You utilize this group throughout the fight. You can create party loadouts to play around with different combinations as you control the main character or leader. You can do a normal attack, cast spells, use abilities, block and evade. But you can also switch to other party members, or give commands for them to use certain abilities, attacks, items, or spells. This core system is practically the same as Final Fantasy VII Remake. However, Rebirth expands on features of this system using synergy abilities, summoning, and materia. Synergy abilities allow you to do a combined attack with a party member to deliver massive strikes and activate certain effects during the fight. Now you can technically play as eight different characters in the game, but there are seven mainline party members in Cloud's group to unlock throughout the game. Pretty good compared to the four playable characters in Final Fantasy VII Remake. These synergy abilities are unique to certain pairs and each character has their own skill tree to unlock them. The game at times will force you to play as certain characters or parties for short periods of time, but I enjoyed playing as most characters and creating different party combinations and roles. Summoning allows you to summon powerful entities to assist you during these battles. There are 13 different summons, and it kind of reminds me of these Kingdom Hearts summons of characters to assist in these large-scale battles. But I do have to say the AI is a little slow. Now let's talk about Materia, which is a vital part of the story and combat. They are practically power-ups that you attach to your weapons and armor that can give you various abilities and powers. The system can be a little overwhelming at times, but the game also provides tutorials to help you along the way. All these aspects make the combat feel dynamic, creates variety from player to player or style to style, and more fulfilling. This game is not just a button masher, but adds a more strategic role on when to use your abilities when to switch to party members, what combos to create, what materia to use, especially facing off against a solid variety of enemies who have different strengths, weaknesses, and you need to use these abilities to pressure and stagger them. Now let's talk about the bosses. 36 bosses are in this game which is more than Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. The bosses vary from creatures, robots, and humans, and they may not as be as large scale or cinematically spectacular as Final Fantasy 16, but they hold up pretty well, and some are pretty epic, and could be quite difficult especially playing on dynamic. Finally, to wrap up the combat segment, I want to address that I played half of my gameplay on graphics mode and half on performance mode. The graphics mode combat held up well, but for those who want smoother combat, I suggest performance mode. The next good aspect I want to talk about is the world and content of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is listed as an open world, but I don't believe it to be a fully open world game. There are seven regions in the game, some are new areas not even seen in the original game, and some areas are actually missing, which I assume will be in the final game. Once you unlock the region, then you can traverse back to previous regions you've been to before, which makes the game a less open world 
than Final Fantasy 15, but definitely more than the segmented Final Fantasy 16. Now these regions are large, diverse biome, and look absolutely stunning for the most part. I felt Final Fantasy 7 Remake was held back in its open world due to the fact that you were stuck in Midgar, but Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth had the chains removed and they leveled up. Now I know what you're thinking, it's about the content in the open world games that are vital to the experience, and there's a lot of examples of open world games that struggle to make the world feel fulfilling by drowning the players in repetitive missions, feeling empty and nothing to do, for which I agree. So how did Rebirth do? Well, it takes an average of 35 to 40 hours to complete the main story of the game, and 60 to 100 hours to complete with the side content. The things to do in this world are pretty expansive. You have your main mission, 36 side quests, which are usually multi-phase missions that actually give you unique rewards and focus on a certain party member in your team. These missions can affect the relationship with Cloud and can actually change some moments during the game. Then comes the world intel missions, and this is where it is more hit and miss. Now I enjoyed the combat simulators, the fiend intel, the proto relic phenomenon missions. They also have tower missions that feel like they were pulled right out of a Ubisoft game, and the monotonous scanning a life spring area, finding a divine intel using QTEs, and these can be repetitive and a slog to get through at times. But Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has one more ace to play, and that's the mini games. This game gives you 30 plus mini games that you find throughout the game, and a couple really shine through for me. The Queen's Blood card game is pretty addicting. It makes me run around the regions looking to collect cards and build decks, avoiding the main missions. Fort Condor is a tower defense strategy game that makes me rage, but I can't put it down. Plus, you can play the piano. Oh, and can I also add 49 weapons to find and unlock, more than Final Fantasy 16, and double the amount of Final Fantasy 7 Remake. The open world is not perfect, but for the most part, the missions and rewards were fulfilling and give you plenty to do. The last good aspect I want to address that may be a bit controversial is the story and characters. Now, I am going to avoid major spoilers, so don't worry. However, I do have a confession to make. I have not played the original Final Fantasy game. Come on, man. Say what? I know. I am ashamed to admit, I was actually introduced to the Final Fantasy VII original characters through Kingdom Hearts games, and most of my Final Fantasy experience is with the recent titles. So I came into these new Final Fantasy VII remakes with fresh eyes, and only looked up the events of the original to compare. And yes, there are some clear differences in the story. But I tell you what, I thought the story was enticing. Final Fantasy VII is a complex story and even has the dreaded M word in its plot, the multiverse. I was never a huge fan of multiverse stories. Have you seen from other games to shows and movies that they are a mixed bag? Some portray them well, as others, not so much. Final Fantasy VII does a pretty reasonable job of inputting the multiverse, and with the Cloud vs. Sephiroth, problems with Shinra, Shinra Wutai clash, there are multiple plots that make the story feel deep. But I do have to make a statement about the end. And again, I will avoid major spoilers. This game covers one of the most important events from the original game. And yes, it's different. But I believe we reach the same destination in both games. But Final Fantasy VII Rebirth takes the scenic route that puts it up for some interpretation. What also hurts the moment is right after the big event occurs, you get into a large and long boss fight. You don't really get the time to grasp what just happened. I didn't dislike it, but I can understand fans of the original feel as if the moment did not feel as impactful as it should have. It didn't bother me as much, but I am also a fan of Kingdom Hearts and the Metal Gear Solid series, so I am a glutton for a little bit of overcomplications and plot holes. This this story, however, is nothing without its characters. We may disagree on how the events took place, but I don't think we will disagree on the cast that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth gave us. The game had strong dialogue, voice acting, the character models looked great. Well, except whatever demons spawned this mogul. The characters are distinct, have their own motivations, and I enjoyed them implementing this relationship system with Cloud. And I admit, I am a Tifa simp. Even the antagonists were enticing, learning their backstories. I honestly don't think there was a character I truly despised. Well, actually, maybe Chadley. What a pleasant surprise. You do remember me, don't you? Yes, there was some cringe moments, some ridiculous over-the-top moments. Is that Red riding a chocobo? But the writers did a good job of balancing humor and drama, and they deserve credit for that. With the good, we also have to talk about the bad. And I don't think there's as many bad things as I saw good things, but there are some blemishes that we have to address, and the first thing has to be the performance of the game. And I won't dive into all the technical terms of its performance, like Digital Foundry or IGN, for which I do use as a resource. But I can only share with you my experience. 
experience. In performance mode, this game can be absolutely stunning at times and a bit ugly at others. It's true. You can see graphical issues with textures rendering inconsistently, some pop in occasionally, or character models getting these weird shadows that look like they are turning into a demon or into Nosferatu. We even see at times during cutscenes where the music is blasting and we can barely hear what the characters are saying. I mean, the music is great, but come on, man. Now again, this is not super frequent, but it shows especially performance mode could use some real polishing, and the key word is consistency. The next bad aspect I want to address is traversing in this open world. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has done a lot right in the world they created, but some basic mechanics like climbing, swimming, jumping is clunky and at times painful. I have spent far too much time running around a mountain looking for stupid paint on a wall to prompt me to an area Cloud can climb. There were even times where my party members can climb a certain hill but Cloud couldn't. Like what the actual hell man? This world was beautifully built, but the mechanics to traverse it at times makes exploring a chore. We have seen a lot of open world games, and unfortunately, this game might be one of the worst at some of the basic mechanics. The last bad aspect I want to address is the camera of this game. This game is a third person perspective game that gives you three camera options. Option one, two, and three. Option one is where you are really zoomed into your main character, practically giving Cloud a license inspection. Option Option 2 and 3 are slightly better and pulled back more, but there's not much of a difference between 2 and 3. And boy, at times, this camera angle really gave me trouble during combat. As the locking system is sensitive, it is pretty difficult to sense when you're being attacked outside the focused enemy. Also, synergy attacks or synergy abilities zoom in even further to show the partner attack animation, and you can't even see what your enemy is doing at times. I have won a few battles where I can't even see if my attack struck the enemy, or I'm zoomed so far into my enemy's body, I can't even enjoy the victory. This may feel small to most, but something that I wanted to share. Overall, there were positives and negatives with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This game provides a fun, dynamic combat system and an immersive world with characters you can fall in love with. However, the performance of the game can use some polishing and traversing in the open world can be painful at times, when it doesn't need to be. With all that said, I have to admit that this is the best Final Fantasy game I have played. I am giving Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth a 9.3 out of 10 and easily a Marsman Gaming stamp of approval. It is difficult for a very hyped game to live up to the hype, but I believe Final Fantasy VII Rebirth does that. Some of the performance and traversal issues keep this game from hitting elite or masterpiece levels in our scale, but this is an awesome game. Oh, and does Cloud have negative charisma? Yes, at times, but my man can still pull. Thank you everyone for watching. If you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel. Until next time, this is Frank signing off. See ya.